Welcome to Networking Field Day. The presentation that you are about to watch from Barefoot Networks is being attended by a group of invited networking delegates who represent the community by asking questions, offering opinions, and discussing the technology that you are about to see. If you would like to see more information about this event, please go to our website, techfieldday.com, and check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash techfieldday. So I'm Roberto Mari, I'm a director of problem management here at Barefoot. And uh, I take care of defining the roadmap for these advanced applications. So some of the posters that you see here on the wall, and uh, those are for some of the applications, advanced uh, applications that we have been uh, designing and working on. Um, my uh, background is just a quick intro, and so you know where I'm coming from. I'm, I just recently joined Barefoot. I was uh, part of the VMware team. I was part of the Nicira NSX uh, product. And uh, over there, uh, you know, I've been focusing basically on uh, how you improve the network programmability. Uh, the approach that NSX follows is uh, building virtual networks. So you decouple from the physical infrastructure, and you programmatically can orchestrate uh, the, the network along with the applications, right? So very powerful as a concept. But one of the issues that we were facing, right, was exactly that because these virtual networks run, runs in the overlay, uh, whenever something happens in the physical network, which we were calling the underlay, you know, that visibility, that repercussion on the application was not clear. So I thought Barefoot was very interesting and I'm very excited to be here because I think we are trying to solve the next uh, step of the problem. So how we can make now we can open up that black box that, that, that basically underlay and we can work and improve uh, visibility and features adoption. So uh, what our customer get is, uh, is a platform and uh, that platform development platform includes our chip. Uh, they get uh, P4 as a language to define the applications that they want to deploy in their data centers. And, uh, and along with the, the chip and the P4 program, they also get a compiler, right? This application uh, will range from uh, you know, how you improve, uh, uh, how you build gateways, for example, right? So if you have a VXLAN gateway, tomorrow there is Geneva, you may want to have like a Geneva gateway, right? Um, how you enhance routing and switching? And so some of the uh, basically uh, features we are working on, advanced application, go along on that path. How we can make routing more efficient, uh, make that routing aware about the, the load that goes in the network, Right, so you can make more efficient decisions there. How we can harness uh, uh, the telemetry in the packets and, uh, and build more visibility. So there are a number of applications that our customers are interested on. And uh, the good things about P4 is P4 defines this forwarding paradigm across multiple platforms, right? So uh, you can take a P4 program and compile it for a Tofino platform which is our chip, but you can definitely extend and compile it uh, for different other platforms. Uh, so one example is OVS. And if you look at uh, Google like OVS P4, you will find that uh, uh, Ben Pfaff from VMware has been working on uh, developing a P4 uh, uh, model of, uh, for OVS. What is the advantage and what are the things he wants to do there? He wants to be able to uh, change uh, the way that OVS process packets without going in 1,000 pieces uh, uh, you know, in, that, uh, in that OVS uh, you know, modules and software, right? So you have definitely a lot of flexibility. You have an ecosystem, and you can uh, leverage that. So in our conversation with customers, um, we are basically discussing a few things, right? First, how they can improve their current layer 2 and layer 3 services. And here there are a couple of interesting things that we are doing. So, uh, one example is uh, the Tofino chip can generate BFD packets and can consume BFD packets. And everything is done in the data plane. So there is no control plane intervention there. So one way of uh, uh, first application is like how we can make this routing protocol react faster, but much, much faster to uh, uh, specific events like failures in the network. Another use case is how we can make routing more aware about the load that goes in the network, right? And uh, there are some experimental things that we are doing, but fun the fundamental concept here is uh, if we have equal cost multipath, sometimes equal cost multipath is not really hashing over this equal cost multipath is not the best way to go. It depends if one of these paths uh, uh, is congested, for example, by an elephant flow. So you'll want to take 
decisions not just based on the, the fact that all the paths are equal, but based on the fact that you know what is the load, the current load on the network. And with Tofino, you can uh, harness some of this telemetry data, and you can feed this back uh, to the routing decision. Um, other scenarios are how you can, and um, Ed was talking about this, how you can take uh, our chip and build an excellent uh, load balancer. So take uh, uh, millions of flows uh, from a load balancing standpoint and, uh, and putting it in a top of rack that runs to Fino, right? Uh, another excellent example is a firewall. Uh, there are customers that are really focused on certain features from a firewall standpoint and specifically they want to get to low latency firewall. And uh, it, the best approach for them is if we could do this uh, in, a, in a Tofino chip. And so we are actually working on uh, putting some of these applications together. Uh, last but not least is uh, uh, the killer app that uh, 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 Nick was talking about, which is inbound telemetry, and how we do uh, <coughs> build that history of, uh, of the packet. As the packet goes through the network, be able to detect uh, and be able to find out all the different paths, all the different switches that the packet has visited, and all the different problems that he has encountered in the, along the way. Can I ask a slide? Yeah. Um, if we can prevent network congestion using you know, some form of P4, does that mean the end of cost? <laughs> well, you know, uh, that's a great question. So I think uh, you still want to have QoS uh, to basically regulate the access uh, uh, for a multi-tenant environment, for example, or for a multi-service environment, the access, uh, the access at, at the host, at the very edge of the network. Yeah. So think about some of these technologies like more something that you can deploy in the physical network. Right. If you have a congestion, let's say, even in a leaf-spine architecture, right, you can have a, you know, a packet burst or an elephant flow that can really kill that bandwidth in the, in the core or in the close environment. Mm -hmm. Well, QoS, I think, will still be widely deployed for, uh, for some of this, uh, you know, kind of edge functions. But it become less. Yeah, a bit less. I would less say, you know, relevant. as these, uh, I mean, we are on the edge here. We are basically discovering, mm -hmm. discussing with customers mm -hmm. what they want to do. And uh, definitely, you know, that, that's the exciting part of it. I mean, yeah, that's the cost, of course, is enormous. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, the, yeah. and that's a real problem in that, you know, the operational cost of administering and maintaining a cost configuration mm -hmm. is just, and so the end of cost would actually be a significant step forward. Yeah. Great. Uh, Greg, this is Ed, you know, that's, you know, that's the potential promise and yeah. that's the tool chats that we're giving people yeah. the ability to, to do. So, you know, think about it as you don't have to pre-classify your traffic. The, the network could be aware enough, right? As Nick talked about. Yeah, so you wouldn't have to configure to, static profiles in the in ingress port. Right. And you Correct. can, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Right. It'd just be done dynamically in the device configuration. If this right. matches this, then cross tag it with that. Yeah. And that would significantly reduce the operational right. load. Is that the? Uh, I mean, yeah. from an operational perspective, if your network dynamically and adaptively and was intelligent enough to do that, that's, that's exactly it. I'm all big on death to cross. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely with this application, you can really harness all the potential that you have in your network, mm. uh, more fairly distribute the load. So um, some of these papers that you see here uh, are like, you know, uh, just the beginning of that research. Uh, in terms of, uh, so let's start from one use case, which is visibility, right? Um, if you look at what is the problem today, and uh, Nick uh, discussed about this at the very beginning, but Today, the networking monitoring is very expensive and, by the way, is inaccurate. So use SNMP, uh, which is like more of a client-server model. You want to pull counters from the switch to find out what is the status of the network. You know, guess what? That's not really efficient and doesn't work because you'll never be able to catch events uh, that are granular, like microburst events or latency spikes. Uh, you also can monitor your networks today using uh, some kind of SLA functionality, like synthetic probes. But again, the synthetic probes don't model the real uh, behavior of the network for the application traffic. They try to model the application traffic, but they're still synthetic probes, right? You can use sample net flow, but sample net flow is not granular enough to give you that visibility. And whenever you have no visibility, you fundamentally have no control. So you can very easily root cause the problem. You can go back and find out Okay, what was my problem? Uh, we heard these, these uh, stories from customers that say, were saying, 
you know, I have a problem. Uh, so I have uh, one of these users that calls me, and uh, there, is, there is an application performance issue. So I go on the switch. I check the counters. Yeah, there are some packet drops. I tell him, yeah, sorry. Yeah, there was a problem. I just clear the counters, and I move on, which is basically, you know, you're never going back to the root cause of the problem. You're never going back fixing the problem because you don't have that visibility, right? And whenever you, you don't have visibility, you cannot also in difficult, in not very easily enforce policy, right? So if you have uh, a, one of these problems uh, that may be caused by a DDoS attack, if you don't have the visibility of what is the offending host or the offending workload, then you're never able to quarantine that workload or, or protect the network from that uh, denial of service. So if we go back to uh, the killer app, right, the, the visibility everywhere, let's try to see how we can solve this problem. Um, so we have uh, the possibility with Tofino to insert telemetry data. We can do that at every packet, right? We can do that at every hop in the network. And uh, with inbound network telemetry, every hop in the network can contribute to that, building that history of the flow, right? That packet can be sent to a, physical, uh, uh, to a physical monitoring device. And you can fundamentally collect a lot of statistics there. I like the analogy of uh, uh, the Nick brought up. So, you know, I have a, there was a customer that had a problem, right? And I have people from the application side and people from the networking side. How do you debug an application today, right? So what you do is you enable system logs, you enable debugs. Uh, you run your application transactions, and then you go back and check what, what happened for, for that application. Did I see any error? Was there, so I have all the instrumentation and the tracing that I can apply to that application. So think about now you, have, uh, you can take some of this concept and move it into, uh, into the data plane traffic, into networking, right? And that's what we are trying to do here, right? And this INT uh, infrastructure and this INT architecture can be extended also to an host. So if you have an overlay network, going back to the original problem that I faced when I was at VMware, uh, you can uh, extend that INT to the OVS, for example, or to the virtual switch. And uh, the virtual switch will be able then to uh, reconstruct the history of that packet. So even if you have a virtual to virtual connection and something happened in the physical network. Well, before you didn't have that information, now you have that information as part of your NSX trace flow, for example. Right. So, another use case that uh, we see very popular there is, uh, is load balancing. And, uh, and if you think about load balancing, uh, what is the requirement for it? So, you have uh, your service or application that you want to scale out. And uh, so you basically scale out, you build multiple instances of that application, and then you put a load balancer in front. Um, if you have multi-tenancy, and if you have uh, multiple services, the number of these load, balances will, load balancers will increase. And so it depends if you have like physical or virtual load balancer, you end up using a lot of rack space, power. And this load balancer, <coughs> if you look at the physical load balancer, it can be quite expensive. You're talking about $200,000 or more, right? Imagine if you could uh, take some of this load balancing functionality and push it at the top of rack. So imagine if you can make every top of rack a load balancer. One other problem, uh, other than infrastructure cost and latency, is uh, <coughs> the life cycle management of that separate middle box, right? You have a specialized service that sits somewhere. You need to upgrade that box. You need to maintain the software releases and stuff like that. Also, because it sits in a very specific part of your data center, in this case, we have uh, some virtual load balancers, you end up hairpinning traffic, right? So for both north to, uh, south, uh, north to south and east to west traffic, you have to go where that load balancer sits. With our uh, solution with Tofino, what we want to do is build a solution that folds back into the network that very simple function, which is the load balancing function, right? Fold it back, uh, allow to, that solution to scale, right? And uh, thanks to the use of uh, our flexible architecture, we can now dedicate some tables for, for the load balancing. We also have a very optimized hashing function. So we can save memory. 
and we can support millions of flows from a load balancing standpoint. So you are looking at a solution that uh, in the low end can support an enterprise, in the high end can also be a great solution for an MSDC customer. So that's what you get, right? So you basically fall back some of these uh, uh, load balancing capabilities. You get very optimized traffic flow now. You have local load balancing resources at the top of rack, highly scalable, a consolidation from a, from a, from a networking standpoint. So better and lower operational costs and uh, also lower costs from a you know, CapEx standpoint. You need to buy uh, extra boxes for that. We also have certain features to protect from DDoS attacks, and that, that goes back to the secret sauce that we have in Tofino, right? So we can uh, look at the state of TCP connections, look at the state of, uh, and, and basically uh, whitelist uh, legitimate uh, TCP connection through that load balancer. Is it, uh, is it fairly easy to program the load balancers in that case in order uh, to handle ephemeral workloads or if you're using containers or something like that? As they yep. come and go, do health checking before they come online, yep. all in silicon? It's quite, it's quite easy and uh, we have built a load balancer uh, uh, and also we have proved that the load balancer can uh, react very well to frequent uh, uh, deep pool updates, which is typical if you have containers. Mm -hmm. These workloads are short-lived. So if you basically have a lot of updates on, on, the, on the destination IP pool, uh, the load balancer will react quite fast. We support also um, in the chip something called like resilient hashing. So if you add a, a member in the pool, there is no impact on the traffic that's being hashed on the other existing members, right? So and that goes back to the slide uh, that you will see in every presentation, uh, the programmability. So we talk about how uh, you can add new applications, like those are the advanced applications that you want to develop. Uh, we will uh, show um, a, a few, uh, we'll be showing this demo, how you can change uh, the, your feature set in the chip. If you need to adapt that to the specific requirements, uh, in the next uh, uh, demo, basically, I will show you how uh, the P4 program can be changed on the fly to adapt to your specific uh, use cases, right? Efficient use of resources. Um, we have different ways. Uh, load balancing is a great uh, example on how things can be efficiently implemented. And telemetry is, uh, is our killer use case, and uh, uh, Chang will basically show you a demo of that INT workloads.